Welcome to the newest platform to hear the stories of the St. Leo Lions. Established in 1889, St. Leo has been called home from a diverse community pursuing a higher education while competing at some of the highest levels of Division II athletics. I'm Christy Lear, Manager of Athletic Communications. When I first moved to the Tampa Bay area to work at St. Leo in 2017, I was really encouraged by the variety of languages and diverse subcultures which filled the campus of St. Leo. It was so powerful. It seemed almost too obvious to start this platform in order to share some of the Lions stories with you. The St. Leo Athletic Department houses so many unique stories which has crafted this ultra competitive Division II school today, which is home to the Lions. This is Stadium Stories from St. Leo University. Hello and welcome to Stadium Stories. I'm Christy Lear, Manager of Athletic Communications, and on today's show, we have St. Leo Assistant Athletic Director of Strength and Conditioning, Joe Nudo. Joe, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for asking. Glad to be here. Joe, you have experience as an Olympic sports performance coach. You have worked with Division I schools among the Big Ten, SEC, and ACC. In 2015, you came to St. Leo from Northwestern University. Could you tell the listeners about St. Leo's strength and conditioning program and throw in some of your favorite parts about working here with the Lions? So I'll start with the second question. The biggest appeal for me coming to St. Leo was to be a part of an athletic department that made me feel more like a family, uh, make me feel more a part of a family. Sometimes at the division one level, especially in a support staff role, you get lost in the shuffle. You feel like just another cog in the wheel that is division one athletics. And, you know, aside from the maybe two or three teams you work with, no one else really knows you. So my favorite part about working here at Leo is just that feeling like I'm a part of a family. I, I, I get to know the vast majority of our student athletes. At least I try to get to know all of their names to a to a certain extent, um, all the coaches and support staff members, whereas in the past, that wasn't the case at my previous institutions, that is. And a little more about the St. Leo Strength and Conditioning Department. We have three primary goals. The first is to eliminate injuries down here in the training facility. And we do that by providing a safe training environment through appropriately planned logistics and the setup of the weight room. And then through appropriate exercise programming, uh, we sit down uh, quite in advance to plan out, map out the year's uh, training sessions for each individual team. The second goal for our strength and conditioning department is to improve performance out on the field, primarily in practice. We try to get our student athletes more resilient, stronger, faster, etc., so they ex can express those qualities out on the practice field. Practice is what makes them better during competition. The third goal of our strength and conditioning department is to improve confidence, improve motivation, improve self-esteem, improve team camaraderie. The mental aspect of training that gets overlooked sometimes, I think, is, a, is our third goal, but a primary focus in our program. Awesome. Thanks. I actually didn't know that, so I really appreciate you laying that out for me and the listeners. Um, do you develop conditioning plans for the program or in individuals or a little mix of both? And and what kind of things do you get to shape as the program's assistant AD? So we have three strength and conditioning coaches on staff, each have assigned teams. We all try to program at the team level first. And then if an individual has certain restrictions or qualities they need to improve, uh, then we'll provide some specific programming geared toward that individual. So for instance, if an athlete has some hip mobility restrictions that doesn't allow them to squat, then he might get some extra mobility work and then a modification in place of that exercise so they don't hurt themselves while doing it. Or if a coach says athlete A looks super stiff out on the field, particularly in their upper back while trying to say throw a ball, they might come in here and get some extra T-spine mobility work. So they'll get individual needs uh, on that level. But we start globally and then try to narrow down as best we can. Awesome. What are some of the biggest differences in preparing for a high school level career versus the collegiate level? 
what is something that you see freshmen wrestle with as they transition to the next level of competition? The answer is the same to both. Everyone needs to learn to move well first, uh, move better first. You can't just throw a barbell on your back and squat 500 pounds like you see on the YouTubes or the other social medias. Um, so unfortunately, I think too many freshmen coming in get impatient. Uh, too many freshmen coming in have unrealistic expectations. Too many freshmen get pretty downtrodden and discouraged when they get put in uh, a regressed group where they have to learn how to properly squat through technique drills first doing what the older athletes are doing. Uh, so that answer could apply to uh, athletes at the high school level as well. They need to do basic foundational movement patterns before they try or attempt to do anything fancy or advanced that they might see on the internet. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, what are some things you strongly believe every single collegiate student athlete should add to their routine in order to accomplish their strength and conditioning goals or improve in their respective competition platforms or, as you mentioned before, practice? Patience. Um, I, I don't think there's one particular exercise or exercise modality that needs to be added to one specific athlete's routine. I think in general, everyone just needs to apply a bit more patience to this process. I tell all recruits that I talk to when they come in that this is a four-year, five-year journey in some cases. And more times than not, mistakes are made, progress is impeded because Either the student athlete, their personal trainer or skills coach back home in high school wants to rush them to get ready for whatever unrealistic expectations they have for them. Gotcha. That's great. So patience is key, no matter what yeah. sport. Are there any success stories at St. Leo that you will never forget and continue to motivate you as you work alongside the Lions? Probably. I mean, there's too many individual ones to list. So... I'll say the 2018 men's cross team. I'll be honest, like when I first got here, the men's cross group surprised me. They were a pain in the butt. Uh, however, uh, after cracking down, I'm not just referring to myself. I know Coach Brad cracked down on the whole lot of them. They refocused, redisciplined, and lo and behold, what happened in 2018, they were playing in the national championship game. So it's just a great testament to them and their staff and getting those athletes to refocus and rededicate themselves and the results speak for themselves. Yeah, they sure do. That's awesome. What about strength and conditioning captures your attention or fuels your passion for this line of work? Have you always been in the gym at a young age? How did you end up in such a successful career path in strength and conditioning? Is it a family thing? Uh, what's your story? Uh, not a family thing. Well, my dad was a big old meathead, so I've been obsessed with training since I was probably 12, 13 years old. Uh, playing sports, I was the athlete that the coach had to kick out of the weight room because it became more of a priority for me than actually participating in sport. Uh, and I've just been obsessed with it ever since a young age. Um, and when I found out that I could actually make it a career of mine, I, I was all in. Uh, you mean I could hang out in a weight room all day and coach athletes and get paid for it? That seemed like a, like a dream. So ever since I found out it was a profession, I've set my sights on doing it. And I've been uh, obsessed and dedicated, dedicated to it ever since. That's cool. That's really cool. Uh, how has working in strength and conditioning affected your lifestyle? So clearly you've been in the gym since you were 12, 13, but in terms of lifestyle, I mean, you, you guys work long hours and you talk about the mental health, but how has this career kind of helped shape your whole life? I have not practiced what I've preached in that sense. Uh, I'm trying to get better at it. You know, there's this whole concept of work-life balance. Everyone spoke about a handful of years ago, but I, I like the analogy of, of those gas burners, right? And one's either burning a little hotter than the other during particular times of the year, and then the other not so much. So <clears throat> one of the things I've, I've tried to do better is take advantage of the periods when we're not so busy and really spend time with my wife and my children. Um, knowing that when we are busy, I might <laughs> neglect them to a certain extent. Um, so being, uh, being more diligent in my personal life, trying to plan those periods and taking advantage of them when I can um, 
was was more of a challenge early on when I was an immature coach. But now, as I've aged, as my kids get older, I've I've tried to put more of a priority on that. On a day to day, once we are busy, you know, I don't. Whoever tells you you get used to waking up at three forty five, four in the morning is full of crap. Um, <laughs> It sucks regardless of how many days you do it, uh, but enough coffee will get me through the morning and, and power through the rest of the day. Uh, so by the time I get home, I have enough juice to spend a little of it with my family and rinse and repeat, wake up early the next day and go. But having 16 week blocks where we're known we're pushing and training our athletes hard and there'll be a respite during Christmas break and summer helps a lot. Yeah. And how, how old are your kids? My daughter is eight. My son is five. Okay. And are they into push-ups or they know, they know what you do and they're looking forward to joining you someday or? Uh, kind of. I, when we come to the gym, we, they hang out here or we do things in the neighborhood at the playgrounds, try to make it fun and more gamified and they like to flex their muscles and lift daddy's weights around the house, but that's about it. That's a fun age. It's cool. What are some things you look forward to for the program at St. Leo? Getting back to normal, first and foremost, and, and, and by normal, I mean like before this whole COVID thing happened. Um, I, <clears throat> I don't like the term new normal for whatever reason. Uh, having the ability to coach groups of athletes again and taking steps forward in that direction. It's, 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 coaching has been a big part of my life for a long time, or at least being a strength and conditioning coach has been a big part of my life for a long time. As we said previously, it's kind of an obsession of mine. So not being able to do that for a year and a half uh, or, or however long it was, has, has made me look forward to this even more. What's that, that phrase? Absence makes the heart grow fonder. So usually after summertime, after Christmas break time, I'm ready to rock and roll and coach again. But after a year and a half, man, I'm, I'm ready to coach again. I'm ready to, I'm ready to have big groups of athletes down here, feel the energy, be positive, yell, and see some progress be made. Yeah, I think everyone's excited for that as well, especially the student athletes. Well, thank you for joining us on this episode of Stadium Stories. I really appreciate you taking the time to kind of shed some light on strength and conditioning and how you got involved and what it's like here at St. Leo. Sure, no problem. Thanks for asking. And thank you all for tuning in. I'm Christy Lear, and as always, go Lions. Lions fans, it's me again. Just wanted to remind you as the 2021 fall season quickly approaches to sign up for all St. Leo Athletics news releases and game recaps to be emailed to you directly. Subscribe at stleolions.com slash subscribe. Again, that's stleolions.com slash subscribe to receive a specific athletic program's releases or all the Lions news. Personalize your inbox at stleolions.com slash subscribe. If you are on all the socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, make sure you are following the St. Leo Lions account and their respective team accounts. Thank you again for tuning in to Stadium Stories from St. Leo University.